All right, guys, Shotty T here with another Alliance video, uh, Alliance War video. We're going to space it out posting this one because we're making them all today, but we're going to post them out on different days just to kind of space out the, the content. Um, because this is war number five for season 23. As you saw, we just lost a nail biter, the last war. So this one is definitely a bounce back. I think that was our first loss of the season as well. We were actually in platinum three for the first time. Um, so, so basically each and every year we're getting better and better as far as like a minimum standard as far as baseline goes, as far as where we want to finish the season. We've been finishing platinum four each of the past several seasons, slightly going higher and higher within those ranks. A lot of times if we're locked into a, a tier, the last war of the season, we kind of step off the gas the last war. But this one, this particular season, every war to the very end may count. Uh, now it comes to the point, it's not just winning anymore, it's about how you win. So, it's nice to get wins, but you want to try to try to keep it to where you're not dying as much as a team, um, because as you get higher, uh, that's gonna the, the, the competition is gonna be better. They're not gonna die as much, and and not not the opponents that you're going against. It's just the other people that are just in that in that peer group. Uh, you, you can win wars and still go down in ranking if people ahead of you are also winning. We're winning more cleanly, but um, stubborn once again. First couple of opponents though are not stubborn. Uh, we faced Storm. Pretty sure that was the diversity placement, and this is also another diversity placement. Not sure why. I mean, Hella Unawakened can be a tricky person to fight. Really, not really. I guess if you had Starburst <laughs> and she's awakened. She can be an interesting person to drain some health, but um, she got so many nullify champs, uh, stagger champs to make that cheat death irrelevant. So really this fight, again, it's a diversity placement, so <laughs> there's really nothing else to say about it because she has those fury and physical resist buffs. I can use my SP1 to consume that to gain health so I can if, if essentially end the fight with 100% health. Well, and there we go. So the next fight, you got a Quake again. Now, I can, now it's like, it's, on this particular node, she can be a little tricky. Uh, but you don't want her to throw, the key is you just don't want her to throw her heavy at all because if she throws a heavy, that means she's charging those um, aftershock charges. And I believe I do fall victim of her charging it at one point. So that way, unfortunately, we don't finish this fight at 100% health. Because <laughs> obviously these first three fights, that was the goal, was just to be perfect. But she's pretty being pretty stubborn throwing her SB2. So... And of course, I always usually leave up that long distance relationship node to kind of cheese heal. And she finally throws her SB2. It's kind of crazy there. And that's that fight. For some reason, I thought she threw it heavy this fight. I guess I said, it's been a while since these, these fights were actually done. I think this was recorded back on January the 3rd. I think I was actually on vacation. I was actually just coming back from vacation. Because you had, yeah, because that previous war, I was on vacation. So I wasn't getting my, yeah, I think I was getting my oil changed right before I went on vacation. Um, so now we got a Killmonger on Mixmaster. You usually don't see Killmonger here, so... Um, so really the main thing is it's just to maintain that armor break debuff so that way you don't have to worry about reverb damage and the specials are relatively easy to evade I mean it's, it's the projectiles on this SP1 are tricky to evade all 
all three of them. So, but other than that, it's just a. There usually we see a Nick Fury or a um, Awakened Korg here. Yeah, they're almost staple at this point. But I, I guess the person decided to put Killmonger here to be different. Of course, I've seen the Nihilus on this note as well. If you don't know how to fight against the Nihilus, it can be a very tricky fight. I believe one of my future recordings does have an Nihilus fight on this note. So be on the lookout for that next video as well. And again, this today is January the 13th. I just recorded the other one. I'm recording them. I'm recording at least two wars today, probably a third one, and also a crystal opening video, which I'll probably go ahead and post the crystal opening video today. Uh, it's basically a feature five star, the new feature five star that came out. So we'll go ahead and get that opening started. Um, I still got some other videos as well. When I look back at some videos I still got saved on my phone, still got quite a few videos I need to put out there because I had started the boss fight videos for Act 7.1. I had posted those, but I don't think I posted all of them. So they've, they're recorded on my phone, just haven't saved them, uh, haven't posted them yet. So we'll... It says some catching up to do. I want to make sure I clear this memory. Because I do plan on uh, doing another Abyss run this weekend. I will. Like I said, I do play poker. So, of course, when I'm in a poker tournament, it's kind of hard to play the Abyss. I, mean, I can squeeze in a couple of war fights. That's not a problem. Um, but in a poker tournament, you do it requires some concentration. Not to, and plus, I don't want to casually do the abyss and waste boost. I want to be able to go solidly an hour at a time. So, I likely, I'll likely still do it this weekend. Of course, you got football, playoff, NFL playoff football. So that's another factor. So we'll we'll see. I think Friday evening it's probably a good time to do it uh, what i'll do is i'll i think friday you can place your defenders so i'll place my defense and then i'll go ahead and, and do my attack uh, before the war attack starts that's when i'll do the abyss so it'll likely be friday night friday evening going into saturday and i think the poker tournament starts at 2 30. But anyway, um, went off on a tangent there. I'll just give you an idea of what I do outside of MCOC. Very competitive guy. Um, so anything that involves some level of competition, I'm all for it. Sports, poker. Poker is a different type of competition. You're playing against other people. Not quite big enough to do vlogs on poker, unless I start making some serious money. I'm more of a recreational player at this point. Um, but uh, this fight's pretty straightforward with um, Omega against Emma, not Emma, but um, Elsa. So that's the main reason why I brought Omega because I didn't want to use Sorcerer. Um, I, I mean, I guess I could have brought Sorcerer, but I like to keep my Omega play fresh. Now, this fight, if I recall, got really dicey at one point. And I'll explain to you why. So, long shot, he's unawakened, so that makes it a little easier. You don't have to worry about him uh, nullifying your buffs, which, and if he has Mystic Dispersion, ultimately gives some power gain as well. I mean, he still may have missed dispersion from the aspect of my debuffs expiring, like my dexterity. I didn't see a huge power gain there, so I don't think he has it. But it's pretty straightforward. You just, 
I mean, you can tech, you can probably punish his SP1, but you have to have perfect timing. And I just don't bother doing it. It's too risky. You got five minute timers. You don't have to worry about being that aggressive. So now he has the that flower thing active. So what it does is if you get hit with it with the SP1 or the SP2, and the thing about SP2, it doesn't even have to hit you. If he has that flower active, then if he launches the SP2, whether it hits you or not, you're gonna take a crap ton of damage. So I was very mindful of that when he got to that flower. I didn't want to push him with two bars of power. Now the SP1, he ends up throwing more of those spikes. Again, if it hits you, it's gonna take a take a chunk of your damage too, because I, I learned that fighting him in uh, Cavalier Quest. Uh, SP1 hits like a truck too if he has that flower active. I know everybody raves about his SP2. But, but you're gonna see here, I make the, um, I made the very fatal mistake of pushing the two bars of power with that flower at it. So now I'm just trying to not, I'm trying to make sure that he doesn't throw a special. I'm holding block on purpose so he doesn't throw a special. I throw my SP1 on purpose so that way just to buy some time. And if he punish me, punish me. I'd rather him punish me with a combo than punish me with the actual SP2 itself. Because if he threw the SP2, I would have been dead. Because he threw it there, but the flower wasn't active. So long as I don't get hit by it, then I'll be good. It's not that hard to dodge. So so that was a scary moment of the fight. Could have died there if he... But that's the key. If you don't want your opponent to throw special, just hold blocks. <laughs> so, and bait the heavy. Because they're more likely to throw a special after you knock them down. Or if you're idle, not holding blocks. So, so you just want to... Always little tactics, survival tactics you can use when you're fighting. And plus with Omega Red, I can always heal myself off the SP1 and SP3, so it really wasn't that big of a deal to take that combo. I just didn't want to take that special attack damage. And after having that close call, I didn't want to flirt with him having two bars of power again. Obviously, I miscalculated. Um, my heavy attack it had pushed him over that two bar threshold but now he has that flower again and again we're not gonna get him closer to SP2 this time I said, he's a very underrated defender. So, if you're not prepared for the SB1, it can clip you too. Like I said, if it touches you with that flower, you're dead. <clears throat> but we're almost done with this fight here. Probably could, I had enough space and I probably could have punished that SP2, SP1, I mean, but it's still just too risky. So that fight took longer than I thought. I had 30 seconds left, but I was being very careful, especially when he had that flower active. Like I said, I probably could have used other people for that fight, but that's who I decided to go with. And this is another reason why I brought Omega Red because of the man thing fight. Now, I probably could have just had another teammate take this fight, really, so that way I could have used somebody else on my own path. But Omega Red is poison immune, so the, the tactic that I did for the for the um, long shot fight, same thing we're going to do here. Now, this fight will get very tricky towards the very end because when he has that um, regeneration active, I can't block. So, and I have no way to nullify that. So I just have to wait it out. So the idea here is to just maintain space control, keep them in the corner. So that way when I do have to retreat to buy time, um, I don't get myself cornered. So now he's unblockable, as I mentioned there. 
So we're just going to dance around, hit into this block, waste some time, keep him in the corner. We're not, we, I know he's stubborn. And this time, and I don't want to hit, actually hit him because I don't want to have him to keep throwing specials either. Because at some point you want to take his health down. So we go ahead and throw another heavy. So we're just chilling, just buying some time. And then we're going to throw another heavy there and chilling and buy some time. And then we're going to throw an SP3. Obviously, we're not trying to get ourselves cornered here. Time. All right, now we're gonna waste this bait special. Now we have to dance around a little bit. Get into this block. If he throws another special, so be it. Just trying to keep space control. Again, we're not caring about the stubborn. It's more about the node at this point. I can always worry about stubborn later. And that's what throws a lot of people off when they face stubborn. They say, okay, every time I diss, they go unblock, undestructible. But sometimes you have to look at, pay attention to the node first before you worry about the stubborn aspect. The node will kill you if you're not careful, especially when it comes to stern reflect. Um, but yeah, this, um, Fight got a little tricky there. I got hit with a combo. It almost killed me. But now we're just going to keep retreating. Let the uh, the generation take him down. And I was trying to get some more healing. But this was the last Omega fight, so it really didn't matter. So next fight here, uh, we got Human Torch once again, and I did not boost for this fight, and there's a reason why, and of course I end up dying as a result, because uh, I like to boost just, to, just to, in case I take a lot of block damage, um, but you'll see that this war was so lopsided, um, it wasn't even a competition, I guess the opponent um, forgot that we were in the season, or they just saw that they were mis mismatched on paper before the when the war started and just didn't bother to try. I mean, if I was in that alliance, I'd be very mad. I would like to play to win every war, or if I lose the war, I don't want to just give it away. I want to at least try. Um, but uh, this fight goes pretty. <laughs> standard to start off I mean of course I, I could have taken this fight without boosting but I believe I fall for the old accidental stun trap and of course I missed time my um, rock stack there again we're not caring about stubborn as you see still stubborn but it's the node you need to focus on first textbook I mean, it's straightforward as you can get at this moment it's always nice to go back and look at it but to see what to analyze what happened but now we've pushed them over the, the rock stack so we had to hit into this block so I mean, this fight is going really well. I'm trying to figure out why I died. I think I know why. Now that I, yeah, I get hit there first of all. Um, so that, that doesn't help. Um, and I get hit again. Yeah. 
And now, and I think what this does, this SP3, I was mainly throwing this SP3 to gain health back. But what I did is I ended up throwing him over the, the rock stats so and now he's unstoppable. And then I get this notification that just throws me off. I'm thinking the unstoppable is worn off by now, but it was apparently it didn't, so I died. So that was a very untimely notification, but again, the damage had already been done up to that point. I still could have finished that fight, though. I, really, I still could have finished it. That notification threw me off. So instead of reviving Torch, like I said, it was one-sided at this point. I didn't want to waste resources. I just said, I'm going to try my best to finish this fight with Venom. I'm used to fighting him stun immune anyway on Stubborn with the boss fight. Even though I actually use parry during the boss fight to minimize the block damage, but in this case, I can't parry. Just have to eat, eat the damage. So the idea is just to purposely let him hit my block and beta heavy. And if I can, I can see if I can perfect block his special attack so that can gain me a stubborn charge. Um, so this fight is not going too bad there. I mean, it's not a good idea to use Venom in this fight, but in a pinch, if you just need to get get down 20, 25% health, I know this is the guy I can count on as long as I don't try to parry the opponent by mistake. That way I got rid of Stubborn there. We just want to shallow evades at this point, try not to trigger it anymore. And there we go. All right, but, and again, I wasn't even scheduled to fight Domino here, but like I said, it was so lopsided, so why not? Let's go for Domino. Um, And she had suicide, so that's another reason why I said I'll go for it. And this will give you a good showcase idea how to fight Domino. Dash back light counter if you have a good reach. If you don't have a good reach, you can just do light dash back medium counter. That'll guarantee to hit her every time. So it's just a little tip there. Really, the main thing I'm worrying about is when she's lucky, she's more likely to evade, and this note does have increased ability accuracy when it comes to evading. So that's the main thing. And of course, if I'm unlucky, I cannot dex her projectile from the SP1 or the SP2. Just hit her there to restart the um, brute force meter and the brute force the main thing is killing me this fight so we hit her again now we got true strike which is going to block that we don't worry we're not worrying about lucky anymore because i have true strike active and it didn't register until later i could have finished her a few seconds sooner but that was not a bad fight like i said i wasn't planning on fighting her there i had planned on using Torch for Doom, but like I said, he was already dead. But again, this war was so lopsided. Um, we had the only, we had 21 kills and they, they purposely boss rushed. They just bypassed a couple of sections, didn't bother. So, I mean, this, I mean, usually you don't get this in this high level of competition, but Normally in the off season, uh, you, we do get this quite a bit. Where people just want to boss rush. Heck, that's something that we do in the off season. Just, to, but um, during the season, don't understand it. But we won the war easily. Uh, but anyway, please like, share, and subscribe, and you have a great day.